Hi, I'm Mike Coffey. I'm the Chief of Statewide Maintenance and Operations for the Alaska Department of Transportation and Public Facilities. The first thing I want to do is thank you for your service to your community, to the region, and to the state of Alaska. By accepting the position of a rural airport contractor, you're providing a vital service that benefits everyone in the state of Alaska. Your airport is the lifeline for your community. And by you stepping up and your willingness to provide maintenance and operations of that airport, we all owe you a debt of gratitude. It's such an important job that we felt it was important to give you those extra tools, extra skills that would really help you do your job to the next level. So we really want you to just sit back, pay very close attention to this training program. We think there's a lot of valuable information that you can take back to your airport and provide a higher level of service for your community. Once again, thank you for what you do. It is very important to the state of Alaska. Airports, ginormous internationals, medium-sized to moderate domestics, non-primary to primary, all these, and then there's the rural runways. Before we get started, let's go over the basic configuration of airports. Most common airports are comprised of runways, taxiways, aprons, and a tower. When it comes to air services, these components are key structural requirements of these sometimes massive traffic hubs. Today's airports host modern infrastructure that support a wide range of planes, cargo, passengers, single engine, etc., going to and coming from different parts of the world. As we begin, you, the contractor, will learn your role and responsibility in maintaining clean and safe runways during the unpredictable winter season in Alaska. We get a lot of like whiteout and blizzards out here where it's really challenging to even see where the village is or where the runway is. So uh, like if you take a snow covered runway in an ocean of snow, it's really hard to see, but if that runway is nice and plowed down and you get some gravel out there, it makes it a lot easier to see, makes my job safer because I can see exactly where I'm going and get it on that runway every time. Air travel in rural Alaska is, uh, is a lifeline really. It, it is the way that people receive their food, their mail, their um, supplies that they need to live out here and uh, do their job. Uh, all the companies that come out to do phone repair, and uh, everything get out there through us and uh, it's a key infrastructure. Rural airports around the state of Alaska are the lifeline that provides essential transportation and economic support for the people living in outer Alaskan villages, better known as the bush. These small runways are crucial in the support of the villagers' lifestyles. They provide getaways from the harsh winters, transport the ailing to better hospital facilities, bring in food and home supplies to sustain the villagers' everyday necessities. Residents, businesses, hospitals, and gas suppliers rely on the airport maintainers to keep the facilities functional, which in turn keep the people of the village mobile and the local economy stocked and efficient. Like in winter, when it's about to freeze up, they mostly use the airplanes to go down to Bethel for hospital and traveling. They also bring medicines, mail for old people, checks through the airline. And it's, it's very important for us because we here we don't have what they call uh, um, the streets and highways and we get our supplies through airplane. In case of an emergency, we use the airport. Ensuring that the runways are safe and secure is vital for the economy of rural Alaskan villages. There are a variety of duties common to all airports, no matter how big or small, long or short, winter, spring, summer, or fall. Contractors, your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to maintain these facilities in the utmost professional manner. Here in Bethel, we have 26 airports. Of those, 23 of them are contracted. The majority of our airports, we rely on contractors to do the maintenance on the airport. And what we expect from them is to keep the airport safe. That's if it's snowing out, you got to be out there plowing, keeping it safe for the safe for the airplanes to land. Other duties that you can expect to do on a daily basis is snow and ice control. If it snowed during the night you're probably going to be required to remove that snow during the day. 
Before your snow and ice removal period, you would want to do a complete thorough airfield inspection and a thorough inspection of your equipment. Those inspections are going to include looking at your lighting system if you have one. It's going to include looking at your windsock, looking at your rotating beacon, and your facility. It's important that we note any deficiencies in siding or any problems with your building. Other duties might include um, asking people not to be on the runway or could even include some minor maintenance or greasing of your equipment. Keep in mind what you should understand when working. Never work under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Perform basic grounds maintenance in and around the airport. Keep the buildings clean and safe. Maintain all equipment and diligently keep up with vehicle safety requirements. For example, oil and grease equipment check all belts and top all fluids. Uh, as an equipment operator, as you're approaching your equipment, you should be looking at your equipment and uh, looking for obvious things from a distance, such as uh, leaking fluids underneath the engine compartment, you know, flat tires, lights, windows, broken windows, any of the obvious things you can see from a distance. Check the steering linkage, look at your cutting edge if you're operating a grader or a loader. Make sure you got a cutting edge that still has use in it. Um, check for some loose bolt, bolts, wiring, hoses. Check the fluids in the engine. Check your hydraulic tank. Check your transmission. That generally covers loaders or graders. Operate the equipment properly and safely. Perform snow removal activities carefully and in accordance with the standards. Check all runway lights for illumination and inspect windsock. Initiate notices to airmen, known as NOTAMs, as required. Respond to emergencies such as fuel spills, fires, and aircraft accidents. Report any damages or emergencies to your representative. Let's step back and talk about NOTAMs. NOTAMs are notices to airmen which are basically notices filed with an aviation agency to alert aircraft pilots of potential hazards along their flight route or of airport facilities not up to par with normal safety standards or if there is a situation on the runway that needs to be taken care of or removed in order to ensure safe takeoff or landing. Issuing a NOTAM is as simple as using your phone and calling the airport manager. Good afternoon, DOT. Hello. Good afternoon. This is the contractor at Scammon Bay, and I would like to report that there is six inches of snow on all the surfaces at the airport. Okay. So that was Scammon Bay, six inches all surfaces, and you'd like to issue a NOTAM? Yes, please. And uh, would you be able to call when you're done? Uh, yes, I can. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, bye. NOTAMs can be issued for a number of reasons. For example, airfield lighting, navigational aids, and or radios are inoperable. Temporary obstacles are around the airfield. Flocks of birds are in the vicinity. Notification of runway, taxiway, and apron status with respect to snow, ice, and standing water. Notification of frost heaves, potholes, depressions, and soft spots are detected. Once you have completed your work on the airfield, immediately call the air station manager and advise them that all work has been completed. Uh, communications, that's, uh, that's how we decide if we're going to go that day. So that village may get their equipment or they may not based on whether or not we can find out if the runway is open or closed, what kind of condition it's in. And that's all coming from either cell phones, radio, any way that we can get that information from the village agent or the people working on the runways. Uh, if we don't get that communication, we just don't know what's happening out there. So that's going to change our decision to go maybe that day. A note to remember is that aircraft have the right of way. You should never interfere with or block a plane when it is moving. Contractors should have a two-way radio to monitor the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, or CTAF, and it also allows you to communicate with people on the ground and the pilots for all situations. Having a clean and innocuous airport goes a long way in preventing unnecessary accidents and loss of lives. 
Performing daily maintenance and required servicing will prolong the life of your equipment and ensure its dependability and efficiency. Your role and responsibility as a contractor is to keep the public safe and the airport operational. Well, the safety measures when working at an airport are not unlike uh, the safety measures that you would use in any situation, any industrial setting. Uh, some of the basic rules uh, are applicable in, in all situations. Uh, need to be visible. Maybe it, this is really important when it comes to uh, uh, working at airports. There's aircraft that are trying to land. You need to be able to be, uh, to, they need to see you. So you need to be visible. Inspect the work area that you're, you're working in be before you start the work. Inspect the equipment that you're going to use prior to using that equipment. Understand the written procedures associated with uh, whatever task you're, you're going to uh, do for the day or, or whatever uh, uh, the written procedures and the location and the contents of the operator's manual. In most cases, the operator's manual will be located in the, in the cab of the piece of equipment that you're operating. It's just crucial for, uh, for any operator to, to, to be real familiar with the contents of that. So it's, those are kind of the general rules. Just be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of what's happening on the ground and, and certainly at an airport, be, be aware of what might be happening in the uh, airspace above you. You as a contractor for the state of Alaska are expected to include safety in everything you do at the airport. You must keep the airport safe. Keep the people safe. Keep yourself safe. Security is another important responsibility for you as a contractor. Keeping the state equipment safe and secure is vital for you to do your job safely and efficiently. Always remember to do the following. Keep the building, fuel tanks, and equipment locked at all times when not in use. Prevent or report when cargo, fuel barrels, vehicles, or any other material are stored on the apron, taxiways, and especially the runways. These areas must remain clear for the safety of the passengers, aircraft, and as well as yourself. Report vandalism and security infractions immediately to local law enforcement and the airport station manager. More importantly, report all accidents, small or big. Certainly if there were uh, injuries uh, involved, uh, it was a serious accident, you know, local law enforcement would, would need to be contacted immediately. Uh, beyond that, certainly uh, the supervisor uh, needs to know about that accident and all the facts associated with that accident as soon as possible so that uh, you know we can we can look at this accident and try to prevent a reoccurrence in the future. Earlier in the video we mentioned what components make up an airport. Now let's take a look at some of these key elements out in the rural villages. First, you'll have the runway. That's the surface where the aircraft lands and takes off from and are numbered according to the direction they face based on a compass heading. Next, you'll have the overrun. These are areas just before each end of the runway. This area must be kept just as clean and clear as the runway, just in case an aircraft lands short or overshoots the runway. Beyond the overrun on each end of the runway are the threshold areas. The first one, or 200 feet on each end of the runway. The next component of the airport is the taxiway. These are the areas that join the runways to and from the apron. The apron is the area where the aircraft park and load or unload passengers and freight. Usually on the apron, there'll be a building or two known as the Shreb, which we'll talk about later in the video. Other areas of importance are the safety areas. These are the areas along the edges of the runway lights and beyond. Safety areas must be kept clean after any snowfall. The wind sock is an orange cone fabric that indicates wind direction and shows how strong the wind is blowing. Surrounding the wind sock is a set of panels that formulates a pattern called the segmented circle, which pilots use to determine what direction the traffic pattern is to approach the runway. This area must be cleaned and well maintained. 
The airport beacon signals the pilot of the location and type of airport that they're approaching and is located above the Shreb building. The color of lights and markings used on the runway and taxiways of the airports are standardized. This helps the pilots know where they are on the airfield as well as where to taxi. Our focus, however, is on rural Alaskan airports. Runways are usually graveled and painted markings are not used. Only on paved surfaces will you see the paint markings. Runways are illuminated with white lights running down both edges of the strip. Towards the end of the runway, the lights may be split to show white in one direction and amber color on the other direction. This is known as split lens lighting. The amber light is to indicate the runway is near the end. On the threshold at each end of the runway, there will be either a red or green split lens light to indicate to the pilot the beginning or end of the runway strip. Taxiways are illuminated with blue lights. This will designate the way to the runway from the apron or vice versa. As a contractor, you're responsible for ensuring that the lights work at all times. When a bulb is burned out or knocked over, you must replace it immediately. So as a contractor, you'll be uh, maintaining the airfield lighting and any damage that we come across. First of all, we need to uh, make sure that your circuits are secured and turned off uh, so there's no risk of electrocution. And we're going to come and find our light. Buried in the snow. Want to make sure it's not damaged if it's going to be replaced. And then we're going to need to clear the snow here so you can't uh, see where the nut is. You'll have to chip that out. You're going to need to uh, remove this nut. You can either use a socket or one of these pipe wrenches. You make sure you can remove as much snow and ice. If you have a compressed air, can of compressed air might be handy to have on site. Uh, this is just a Re-Yankee screwdriver. It's kind of like a manual drill. Um, it's just going to turn and and pull out any of the ice that's in the uh, in the joy connector uh, female pins. Make sure there's no ice in there. Make sure that it does a good job of making contact when you put the fixture back in the hole. I'm gonna put a uh, new frangible on. We would suggest to use anesthes, keeps them from sticking so bad. Screw that in. You recognize there's two pins, one's a large pin and a small pin. We just wanna make sure that we line it up properly. They do make insertion tools you can get from the suppliers to make it a little easier. You'll know when you get it in there, it'll go in nice and secure. We normally twirl these up just a little bit so that you make sure that you do not crushing the wire on the bottom of the, uh, the stem. You want to make sure it goes up into the stem. Make sure it's seated properly and tighten that up and there you're done. You're ready to turn the power back on. If the scope of extended electrical repair is beyond your contract or ability, definitely call the airport manager and inform them of the situation immediately. A representative of the state will be sent to analyze and or resolve the issue. Your airport should be equipped with cones. They should be predominantly orange with reflective bands. When the cones are damaged or faded, it's your duty to replace them to ensure safety first, always. All signs and threshold markings must remain visible and free from damage. Keep snow and foreign objects clear from the runway. Lighting at each runway is really important, especially in low light conditions, low visibility conditions. If we can't see them and they're buried under the snow, it gets pretty unsafe. We, we, we use them for a glide path down to the runway. We use them to uh, you know, know where the runway ends and the sides are. They're, they're very important to be able to see those runway lights. The storage shed or buildings built by the Alaska Department of Transportation to house state equipment at your airport is known as the SHREP. Parts, tools, sand, and other state property can be stored in these facilities for airport use only. 
The airfield and the snow equipment removal building is dedicated strictly to airport use. It can be very tempting sometimes to put four-wheelers and snow machines in, in the building, but it's important that we don't do that. We also purchase these buildings with federal grants, and those grants come with stipulations that we only use them for airport purposes. We need to be absolutely sure that we remove all hazards from the airport. Hazards could be anything from uh, kids on four-wheelers to, to pets that are loose on the airfield to wildlife. If you're having a trouble keeping people or wildlife away from your airport, then you should contact your DOT representative right away. You as the contractor are responsible for keeping the Shreb clean and well organized. It's also your responsibility to ensure everything is locked and secured at the end of every shift or if you leave the premises. Lock all walk-in doors. Lock all vehicle and equipment doors and compartments. Make sure the storage bay door is rolled down and secured. Lock the fuel tanks and or gates to the fuel tanks. Lock the lighting and radio room. Use caution when driving equipment into, out of, and around the Shreb. It is extremely difficult to repair the buildings once they've been significantly damaged. Some of the most common accidents are hitting the equipment door, hitting the Shreb with the wing blade, backing into the wall of the Shreb. You, the contractor for the state of Alaska, are expected to protect the fuel supply provided for your equipment and buildings. The use of state fuel for other than state equipment or state buildings is a criminal offense and can cost you your contract. Remember, you must report any form of vandalism done to state property, both to the airport manager and also to the proper authorities. Snow removal and ice control are the two most significant activities facing airport contractors in the winter months. Before we begin on the two methods of plowing the airport runway, here are a few items you must take into account. You must issue a notum if there are more than two inches of snow on the runway, there are berms present, or you are going to be on the runway plowing snow. Contact the airport manager if you are unable to plow the snow or if there are berms that you cannot remove. They will assist you or send someone else as soon as they are able. Remove snow berms and windrows as quickly as possible. Do not leave them on the runway edges, ends of the runways, or across the entrance to a taxiway. In the winter months, it's always a good idea to check your runway conditions during and after snowfalls or during times of high winds. The winds can leave snow drifts on the runway that can be just as dangerous as deep snow. When plowing, keep your cutting edge or blade one inch above the surface. Getting too low causes the gravel to be bladed off the runway and not only creates more safety issues, but also adds unnecessary work for you and costly repairs for the state. You want to check your cutting edge at every shift, make sure that you about have at least more than an inch of cutting edge. If you go any more than an inch, you're going to start getting into the, the frog on the moldboard, which is where the bolts are. If you wear into the bolts, then you have to have your old moldboard changed. As you make visual inspections of the runway, make sure the snow or drifts are less than two inches. Snow berms can compact themselves when they are not removed immediately and may cause damages to an aircraft if they run into them. Snow berms on the side of runways or taxiways cannot be higher than 12 inches and should be pushed outside the lights as soon as possible. Snow removal priorities are always as follows. First, the runways second, the taxiways, and third, the ramps and aprons. There are two acceptable methods for removing snow from the runway. The first method is called split the runway. This is the preferred method for removal and is also the fastest and safest way. You start in the middle of the runway and plow lengthwise and to the right towards the edge of the lights. Plowing to the right is helpful as the graders have a wing blade on the right that helps with this function. And once you reach the end of the runway, lift your blade and turn around. Still plowing to the right, proceed down the opposite side of the center line and push the snow towards the perimeter lights. Continue doing circles, moving the snow from the center of the runway to the outer edge of the runway. 
This method is used when there is little or no wind. If the wind is blowing down the length of the runway, leave your berms 10 feet inside of the edge lights. Then take your grater and slowly work the berm to the outside of the lights. Be careful not to bury or knock them over. Once you're done working around all of the lights, continue to move the snow off the edge of the runway as far as you safely can. The second method of snow removal is called plow across the runway. This method can be used when there is a strong crosswind. Starting at the edge of the runway and plowing lengthwise, begin moving the snow across the entire width of the runway. Plowing in the direction that the wind is blowing helps to get the snow moved easier. If the wind is blowing against you, the snow will accumulate back where you started. Your first pass at moving the snow should be 10 feet inside the lights to avoid damaging them. Be extremely careful not to hit the threshold lights and cones when you are turning around. Once you reach the end of the runway, lift your blade, turn around, and change the direction of your blade to the opposite side. This technique creates a larger berm, so clearing it off the runway is crucial. If you have a berm on the edge of the runway and a pilot wants to land, you must let them know the location and the height of the berm so they may take precaution not to run into or land on them. Once you have cleared the runway, the next priority is to clear the taxiway and aprons. When the taxiway and aprons are done, work around the lights, signs, and segmented circle. As you can see, or maybe already know, obtaining a state contract for airport maintenance comes with many responsibilities. It is also very rewarding to know you played a part in saving a life or saving the community because the planes were able to take off or land at your airport. If you sense something is unsafe, or if you are having problems with the equipment, never hesitate to call your airport manager. Just remember, the businesses and people of the village rely on you. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. We have covered a lot of ground and we encourage you to watch it frequently because your role is so vital to your community and to the state of Alaska. Never hesitate to call your airport manager if you have any questions at all. And most importantly, do what is necessary to keep your community as well as yourself safe.